I consider myself a humanist and an optimist, but I can completely understand and relate to people who take the opposite viewpoints. I can completely relate to people who have a very, very, very low opinion of human beings and don't share my perhaps naive, rosy vision of, of the future that could be and perhaps will be. And I especially understand and relate to those sentiments at times like we've seen these last two weeks here in the United States with uh, first the grand jury in Ferguson, Missouri declining to indict Darren Wilson. And then just last week with a similar decision from a jury on uh, Staten Island failing to indict or declining. I did, they didn't fail to indict. They chose not to indict the uh, police officer who choked Eric Garner to death on video with a bunch of people standing around in a case that is far more clear cut and easy to see than the Ferguson case. I see events like that transpire. I read and hear the reactions of people to these events and and I feel like, you know what, fuck us. What 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 are we doing to each other? What what is wrong with us? Those of us who consider ourselves liberals, who consider ourselves enlightened and oh, I'm not part of the problem. I'm not racist. Sure, I might be a white person, but I, I, I've never mistreated someone because of their color. I've never mistreated someone because they were from another country or because they were from another background as me. I'm, I'm progressive. I'm enlightened. I'm not like that. I'm one of the good guys. We are not the good guys. I am not one of the good guys. The best I can say for myself is that I, on occasion, have tried to be a good guy. I am a product of this culture just the same as everyone else. We are all a part of the problem. There's not a single person who is not a part of the problem because if we have not directly contributed to it or directly been victimized by it, then we have watched it. We have seen it. And maybe we've said something occasionally. Maybe we've voiced some outrage, like I'm voicing here, and I'm not pretending that this video and these thoughts I'm going to share with you are capable of absolving me of anything. But we have all been part of the problem. And those of us who have flattered ourselves by telling us, by telling ourselves that we are not part of the problem are part of the problem most of all. Because we're the ones that let it happen. And patted ourselves on the back for not being part of it. For being one of the good guys. Well, I would never do that to somebody. If I was on that grand jury, I sure wouldn't have voted that way. If I was a cop, I sure wouldn't treat people that way. Maybe. Hopefully. Hopefully that's true. I would like to think it's true for, my, for myself. I would try to make it true. I would try to behave in that way, to conduct myself in that way. But the truth is, I've had the feeling when, I, when I've been sitting in my truck and I've seen a person of color, especially a black male, walk toward me. I've had, I've felt the impulse to make sure that my door was locked. I've sometimes, I've even locked the door. And, I've, and, and when I think back on it, I wonder, did that guy who was a complete stranger to me and almost certainly meant me no harm and in fact probably took no notice of me, I wonder if he heard me lock the door and if he immediately put me in a category with every other white asshole who ever gave him shit about something that he was doing that was utterly harmless. I think about that a lot, especially lately. And I think about 
how so many of us, especially us white folks, are so quick to defend ourselves and to try and absolve ourselves or distance ourselves from the problem, from racism, from uh, the marginalization of people of color, from Jim Crow and segregation and slavery and all that stuff. That, oh, it happened so long ago. We're so quick to try and absolve ourselves of personal guilt that we miss the point of the entire conversation. When someone complains about racism and someone complains about white people exploiting or mistreating black people or people of color in general the fact that you as a white person may be personally innocent of any racial ra racially tinged misdeed is not the point maybe you don't have anything you have done personally to feel guilty about maybe you as an individual are free of guilt when it comes to racism or bigotry or or mistreatment of people but we as a group we as a class and i'm talking about white people we white americans as a class should feel way worse than we do not because of what our ancestors did but because of what we see every day and we allow to continue of course there are the apologists there are the denialists there are people who say look you're just being emotional about this you're just blowing this out of proportion it's only it's only two grand jury decisions they say things like oh well let's not get carried away now there are still far more good cops than bad cops and i certainly hope that that's true and would like to think that that's true but let me ask you this what the fuck difference does it make how many good cops there are when the bad cops can kill motherfuckers on videotape and not even get indicted for it. What difference does it make how many good cops you have? The problem isn't lack of good cops. The problem is lack of accountability for bad cops. And the problem is also refusal to acknowledge the incredibly important role that fucking racial prejudice plays in the whole issue. That's the problem. Another good friend of mine on Facebook posted a status after the Eric Garner verdict and he said the next person who says, oh, it's just a few bad apples is going to get fucking hit. I completely relate to that sentiment. It's not just a few bad apples. And people also try to say like, well, you're just, you sound an awful lot like a conspiracy theorist, Steve. I mean, you're saying that there's like, you know, people are out to get all these black people in there. There's, there's like a, a, a conspiracy to protect these cops. It doesn't take a conspiracy. That's the point. I don't need to propose a vast conspiracy in order to account for Ferguson, in order to account for Eric Garner. I don't need to say, oh, they're all in it together. All the white racists are plotting together to hold down black people and to protect crooked, racist, violent white cops. I don't, conspiracy isn't necessary. Racism is all that's necessary. Fucking racism accounts for it. Not conspiracy, not plotting, not, not intentional, conscious collusion between prosecutors and judges and grand juries and police. Racism. People just doing what comes naturally because they are warped and twisted by prejudice. That's the worst kind of racism. That's the worst kind of bigotry that there is the soft kind, the casual kind, the silent kind, the invisible kind that has permeated our society since the very beginning that every American has been soaking in for our entire lives. It saturates all of us, whether we have been perpetrators or victims or just simply witnesses. We are all a part of it. We are all touched by it. And just as natural selection has an almost undetectable but nonetheless incredibly powerful ability to shape life over the course of many generations, this sort of soft, silent bigotry, racism has shaped and continues to shape 
our society, and all of our lives. I grew up in a small town in Western Maryland, Clear Spring, where the actual population of the town was maybe 400 people when I was growing up. Almost all of us were white. I heard the word nigger more times than I can remember. I've said the word nigger more times than I would like to admit to. It was almost never said with malice. I almost never used it as an invective. I almost never said it with anger or hatred in my heart. And I almost never heard it said that way by the people I was surrounded by, by my family, by my parents, by my grandparents, by my brother, by my friends. It's just what you call black people. It's just what they were. I remember my grandfather had uh, had neck surgery. He had to clear. He had to have a, an operation to clear a blocked artery. He nearly had a stroke. And when I went to see him after he got home from the hospital, he had a big scar, a big scab on the side of his neck, and a, a big, you know, like a kind of a bandage across it. And uh, he made a joke to put me at ease, just in case I was disturbed by seeing him with this big gash in the side of his neck. And he said, oh, yeah, you see what happened? A couple of niggers jumped me and dragged me into an alley and robbed me. And they gave me this. It was, just, it was just a joke. He also used to say, uh, I don't have anything. I don't have any racial prejudice. I own a color television. And I love my grandfather, my pap. He's one of the most important people in my life. He, he's, he's, been, he's been dead for 10 years. I miss him every day. He was like a second father to me. I love him and admire him and respect him more than I could possibly ever express to you. The next video in this Off Monday Ramble series is going to be about him. But that racism was a part of him. I don't think he bore people of color any ill will. I don't think he wanted to see them subjugated or segregated or mistreated. And I never saw him mistreat anyone of a different race. I never heard him express those views to me. But he thought nothing of calling a black person a nigger. He thought nothing of making a racist joke. It was just a part of him, as it has been a part of so many people that I have known in my life. It's just a casual accepted racism. It's normal. It's who we are as people. It's who we are as a nation. It is just as fundamental to our society and our culture as our love of liberty and free speech. Racism, prejudice, bigotry in all its forms is just as fundamental and inseparable from the American character as all of those good things that we all are so proud of. And you know what? We must be proud of the racism and prejudice too because we sure seem damn determined to hold on to it. And we sure seem damn determined to remain as in denial and willfully ignorant of it as we possibly can. There are people who, even in the wake of events like Ferguson and the Eric Garner case, will still insist that racism just isn't a problem in America anymore, that it's just not a big deal. It's in the past. You know, why do these people have to protest in New York City? They're going to, don't they know they're going to ruin the tree lighting ceremony? People actually said, people actually said that on television. If you think that it's not a problem, if you really think that racism is not a problem and that it doesn't kill people and destroy people's lives, right now, today, at this very moment, then you are either appallingly ignorant and really need to start fucking paying attention, or you are in denial. Because if you listen and you look, the evidence is all around you. The evidence is out on the street. The evidence is on television. The evidence is 
on the radio. Why do you think, do you even know that police brutality has been a constant recurring theme in black music for decades? Why do you think that is? Do you think they're just belly acres? Do you think those black communities are just, oh, they're, they're just, they just, you know, they, all they want, all they want to do is complain. They want everything handed to them. Hey, I've gotten hassled by the police before. You don't see me making a big deal about it. We don't riot. Is that, is that the attitude? Listen to a black stand-up comic who is playing to a predominantly black audience. And you don't really have to listen very long before you start to hear the jokes about driving while black and police brutality and how to act around the cops or how to act around white people versus how you would act around your black friends and family. Those are the easy ones. Black comics, really talented black comics and just sort of hackneyed black comics, they all do those jokes. They all mine that material because they know if they're talking to a black crowd that everybody in that room is going to get it. They know it's a universal experience. So do you think, what, are we white folks just supposed to, to hear that, to look at that and say, oh, they're just making it up. They're just making a big deal out of nothing. They're just being too sensitive. It's been a refrain in their communities, in their culture for decades, for centuries. But it's probably not based on anything real. It's probably not true certainly not based on any sort of genuine human experience that has been shared by millions of people that is easily observed and easily documented if you give a fuck if you take a moment to put out a minimum of effort i don't know what we can do about it i don't know i don't know how we fix it <sighs> whatever the fix is it's going to take a long time and it's going to require a lot of effort from a lot of people. I can tell you in the meantime where my sympathies lie. They don't lie with my fellow white people who are trying to make this about them. They don't lie with my fellow white people who feel guilt-tripped and put upon by all this. They don't lie with people like the preposterous and disgusting Rand Paul who tried to make the death of Eric Garner more about the high price of fucking cigarettes than about racism. My sympathies lie with people of color in this country who have to wake up and live every day worried about themselves, worried about their children or their grandchildren or their husbands or wives or sisters or brothers or friends being abused and perhaps even murdered for doing nothing for committing no crime because a white person with a little bit of authority with a badge and a gun decided that he didn't like their attitude and that he was within his rights to use lethal force against them. The people who have to worry about that, the people who live with that as a real concern every day of their lives, they're the people that I sympathize with. They're the people that I would love to see given some relief. They're the people for whom I would love to see justice. but I don't know how to give that to them. I wish that I knew. I wish that I could. But I can't. We might be able to. All of us together, we might be able to. But I don't know if enough of us want to.